So, hello. So today I want to show you guys uh, something about kick bass. How I make it, how I think it should be, or not how it should be. There are so many ways to make it good, or I also don't think my bass line is the best, for sure not in the scene, but how I like my bass line is more like with uh, like white with a lot of dynamics, you know, like lot like too tight also with more um, decay and, and sustain, you know. Not too tight, so that it rolls like, but it's tight, but it rolls. And also like the like to divide the frequency spectrums, you know, like the different ones that you get like a really nice and clean, but also with a lot of stereo influence um, baseline. Because a lot of people make bass on only in mono. I did it a long time, but then I figured out that I don't know. I m was missing something in the bass line always when I was playing on big sound systems and stuff. I noticed something that I didn't like, and then I started experimenting. And then I found out I can also use the bass line in stereo and still have the sub like almost mono and stuff. And but I will show you guys later how you can do this. So this is my setup for my bass line. Here you can see it in the channel strip on the left side. So. I show you all the plugins I have in here. The first one is like it's the NLS channel stereo from um, Waves plugins. It's um, something uh, Morris told me from Loose Connection. It was a really good tip, man. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Been using it ever since. And it's like I don't know, like uh, you know, some guys uh, use this plugin. I don't know. Banana, I don't know what, what's the name, but something with banana and it's like this, but then maybe better quality probably because it's from ways, I don't know. Still, I like it. And what this do it does is like, um, basically it's like an amp or something. It gives more color and saturation to your bass line. So if you hear the difference without, with and without, I will show you. So there you hear a lot of difference, I think. So you, you notice it adds a lot of color to the baseline. You know, VB1 is just a really small plugin. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm using VB1. Sorry, I forgot to, sorry, it's my first tutorial. So I'm still learning a lot myself. You know, maybe I should write this stuff down, but I'm more like a spontaneous guy also in my production. And again, in tutorials also, I think. So I'm using VB1. Here also you can see my settings. I think this is pretty basic only. I think a lot of people put this damper is like basically a sustain, I think, like how much um, decay, how much um, space there is to play around with this thing. And then um, I put it like mostly like pretty low, you know, like on the 80 to 89 or something. Most people put it like this, like 90 or 92 or something i think but then it gets too tight again that's what i don't like so much you know my personal opinion is more like let the bass roll you know like let it loose and then give it some space to move so uh, then then this is like a eq a phase eq from uh, most people notice it's like just a low cut and a little bit high cut but just like phase eq then this is like the main part where everything happens this is only um only QA's plugin for now. That's sad for the people who use uh, Ableton and stuff. The old quarter of use was um, also possible, I think, in uh, Ableton. If it's somehow, maybe this one also. There are also always some freaks who get the stuff done, you know, and get everything to work everywhere. I'm not one of these guys. I just use the easiest way, the most lazy way. <laughs> Um, but this one is really nice, you know, here I found everything that I was looking for and the old one was not able to do this what I do now with this one I think because a lot of people don't like this new one. So basically what this is, this divides like the frequency spectrums from uh, 0 to it is and 500 to 500,000 to 1k and 10k and you know, you know how this works, it's like a fab filter set term or uh, quarter of use the old one so what i found here is like really nice you know i have like the sub frequencies i have like the width you can adjust the width here for every frequency spectrum and there the width is like really low you know like almost mono 
and then for the middle one and the higher one the higher frequencies i i put the width pretty high because then you get this like you know no you know the bass the sub frequencies are like in the middle where they should be and like stable and then the other frequencies you can play around in the stereo field and then you get like this really nice clean bass sounds you know when you hear those on, on big sound system i was so satisfied the first time when i hear my new bass lines on big sound system because it's exactly what i was looking for you know and i don't know if this uh, is the correct way because to be honest i'm not the theoretical guy when it comes to production but um that's how i do it you know if you hear the difference i will show you again wait think you heard the difference so that the wide spectrums get uh, the higher frequency spectrums get much more space you know in the in, in the stereo and that's like i think also someone like uh, i don't know how dark whisper makes this um bass sounds but it sounds a little bit like the technique he is probably using and also uh, outscore uh then we have like this uh fab eq everybody knows this one and here i just basically you know like eqing baseline is like so much for me not theoretical because i know some guys are like you have to cut this one and this one and this one that's not how i work because i don't know theoretically what i have to cut i have years for this i think and you know i just cut everything uh, all the frequencies that i think are, are disturbing other sounds in in the kick and stuff and you know you have to like, you your kick with your bass you know like basically if you think uh, this frequency from the kick should come more out then you should equal equal equ this frequency away with your bass line you know that it has more space in with it for the kicks you know so that's basically how i do it and also my personal opinion not too much high because uh, if one is a lot of high you know but i can show you the difference with and without my eq So basically it's not doing that much, you know, it's like um, showing, uh, it's just giving it more clean sound and there's more space for the kick. So last but not least, we have the compressor and that's like pretty basic compressing because I only use it for um, sidechain. I just do a little bit of sidechain with compressing. I will show you next how I do my, um, how I do the real sidechain. I don't like compressing sidechain too much because if you overdo it, what sometimes can happen before you know it, and then it's um, it takes away a lot of cleanness and space for the rolling effect of the bass line again, I think. So this is just like a basic uh, ratio and uh, attack here and threshold. Uh, and I link it to my um, kick sand, of course, and to their sidechain, as I'll show you here. Oh, no, I didn't even sidechain this one. <laughs> but if I would do it, I would do it like this. But li like I said, I don't, I'm just showing you this because a lot of people like to sidechain. I don't do it that much. I put it on here in Cubase, and then I would just put it like this, you know, like really low mostly because I don't like too much sidechain, to be honest. So how I do the sidechain then, you ask? Like I think a lot of people know this technique, I will show you in the piano roll. Here is the piano roll. And then you see my notes here. And then always the first one, I put the velocity here, you see the velocity. And the first one I put the velocity a little bit lower and then you get this more rolling effect. And I think this is much more cleaner than sidechain, but that's just my opinion nothing right or wrong here that's just how i do it so i think that was the first one the first tutorial i think we made it always happy to hear more things you want to learn or how i can do this differently i'm just testing you know around with the microphone and with the sound of cubase also so maybe the next one i will do an another one from baseline again that's a little bit better so yeah hope i could help and uh, see you for the next one bye